I hope you're all enjoying the 4th of July week as best as you can. I know some issues out there which we will be discussing here is making it difficult for those in the U.S. soccer space, I am sure. Uh, I uh, am trying to get some beach time and relaxation as much as I can. It's been very busy and I'm sure you, like I have, maybe sacrificed a vacation this summer. Told your family we're going to put it off until Christmas so that you could be around and watch Copa America and Euros, which are wrapping up. Thank goodness. I mean, I say thank goodness, but I could actually watch another two weeks of it, quite frankly, and I'm sure many of you could. Uh, whatever the report's about it getting bad, it, I, 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 we'll talk about that another time. But we're here to talk about the big topic at hand that really is getting all the traffic, and that is the future of the USMNT coach. And we'll be all over this. And by the way, uh, check out the podcast. Check out the Soccer OG podcast where all podcasts are available. We got one there with Brian Dunseth. We'll have a new one coming out next week to talk about Greg Berhalter, whoever's replacing him, if someone's replacing him. We will also wrap up the Copa America and the Euros. Like and subscribe us here. Sorry, man. It's a pretty good summer attire. Hope you're getting out there. So we got two servings of U.S. soccer news via Doug McIntyre, who is a friend of the program here. He's been on the podcast many times. Again, check it out. And then we got uh, one serving and then another one that were exclusive to Fox. Uh, the first one that came on while we are watching the game is that uh, the decision of the future of Greg Berhalter will be decided in the middle of next week. A couple days later, over the weekend, Doug would come back on with uh, Jimmy Conrad and one of the, the Fox shows that they do, and, and would add that uh, if there is a belief that a decision on Greg has been made, that is erroneous. No decision has been made. And that uh, they're still going through that process. U.S. soccer, uh, who um, there are some people in U.S. soccer, he said, that would like to bring him back. Don't shoot the messenger. Uh, Doug would also give us a leaderboard of coaches, which we will get into that here in a moment. I want to, first of all, because I know the, the header, my thumbnail, uh, you may think it's clickbait, but I just want to make it abundantly clear that I want to change for U.S. soccer. And I supported Greg through the World Cup, thought he did a, a, a decent job, but what's happened in the last two years, choo, across the board, poor. There is no, there's no redeeming quality on bringing him back based on that. And now with the outrage from the fans, and who knows, the partners, etc., uh, that uh, it, they know, U.S. soccer knows it's heating up and it would be bad PR if you certainly bring it back, which it would. You need to revitalize it, energize the fan base. You need to give them something, whatever it is, whether it's the diehards or the, 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 the novices or what have you that you're trying to bring into soccer that will consume it. Uh, you got to be happy with them because they're all catching here that the Copa America was a huge mess. So I want to make it abundantly clear that th this is the time for change. And if U.S. soccer, if U.S. soccer comes up in the middle of next week, and by the way, that really bothers me too from U.S. soccer. This very stealth approach to announcing this. They did this similar to the women's coach Vlako Andonovsky, waited about 10 days before parting ways with him. So at least there's the comfort that this has happened before. I don't like it. U.S. soccer, we don't see or hear anything from them. This is their modus operandi. It's not right. You've got to get better. This was supposed to be getting better since 2017. We were supposed to get more transparency. You've tried in some things. I haven't seen Cindy Parlo-Cone anywhere. I haven't seen Matt Crocker. Matt Crocker should be front and center. He should have a video address to tell us this instead of us thinking a million different things out here. Uh, tell us, not because you have to, but you want to show to us that U.S. soccer is changing. It has a reputation. You know that. That's why you're here at this job, to change this reputation. Well, the reputation hasn't been changed. So if U.S. soccer comes out next, I'm laughing because it would be hilarious. If they go, we're keeping Greg Berhalter, I would, I would buckle over and then I'd be upset. Yeah, and it would be very U.S. soccer-y for them to do that. And Doug McIntyre warned us that Greg Berhalter, I just can't see it. The only reason I can see it is because the options, nothing really connects. Who would take over for Greg? It doesn't quite, it's going to take some moving of heaven and earth 
for U.S. soccer, which they should be doing because the World Cup is that important, but it's not really their character, is it? So I'll believe it when I see it. It's a great opportunity for them to seize this moment, but everything they've done since the Copa America exit suggests that they're not seizing this moment. It's same old U.S. soccer, which has frustrated us uh, for years. I've dealt with it for a long time. I support the product. I know the people there and I'll stick up for them, but come on. Come on. So I want the change and I don't like the way they have handled this, which again is par for the course. The other thing that is working against Greg is a potential replacement, which didn't happen. Jesse Marsh has Canada into the semifinals of the Copa America. They have a dream game against Argentina. That is the biggest game in Canadian soccer and probably will be for the foreseeable future. Unless they do something at the World Cup, but that, it, it would have to be substantial. They would have to play in a World Cup quarterfinal to match playing Messi and Argentina in the semifinal of the Copa America. That's huge. So that's putting on pressure because Jesse Marsh was buccaneering and came out and got the results to knock out Venezuela. So all of that is there. And you start adding up on your hand. There's no way Greg Berhalter can come back. It's one, two, okay, enough. We, we've, got to, we, we've got to get through there. So uh, if they haven't made a decision, that's another red flag. Why haven't you made a decision? What are you waiting for? Maybe to find the right candidate, but it still, um, it still doesn't, doesn't sit well. The uh, upsetting the fan base. And look, I deal with a lot of the fans out there and I appreciate your passion. And the reality is U.S. soccer doesn't have that many fans, certainly of a diehard variety. So don't upset them. I know you shouldn't do what they say. And a lot of them are uh, just a little bit out to lunch with their takes. Some are, intel some are very are articulate and intelligent and are, are, thoughts are in the right place. Some just say things to say things. But whatever, they're still diehard fans. You've got to look after them. They are your fans. And don't shoo them away if, in fact, you make a decision. Be considerate to them, even if it's something they don't want to hear. So uh, I think that's really important. I know a lot of fans say they're going to protest U.S. soccer and they're going to protest the partners and the advertisers and not buy those products. And I say, more power to you. I respect that decision. I can't do it. Uh, you're better people than I am with regards to that, but uh, I salute you. But if you're going to do it, do it. Don't say you're going to do it, then come back and start, you know. If you're going to protest, don't let me see you in a Volkswagen. <laughs> Just be, I mean, don't, words have to mean something too from the fan base. So we'll see if the partners are upset. I don't know. I don't know at this point. So it is what happens next if we do here, which I think we will that Greg Verhalter is not coming back. Uh, people want a high-profile manager. What is that? What is that? Uh, Jurgen Klopp, which is really pure imagination almost. If it happens, I will be floored with regards. It's just like Willy Wonka's factory, man. It just isn't real. Tim Howard said he would go check in to see if he could do it. I imagine Jurgen Klopp is interested, but he just retired. And I imagine he's enjoying retirement. The... What's going to happen with uh, retirement, you could woo him out of it because the U.S. soccer job doesn't have to be and won't be demanding like a club. And that is what Jurgen Klopp has said time and time again about Liverpool. It was just too much. This would be easier, so to speak, and he would have the, he would have the, the runway because everyone would be thrilled that Jurgen Klopp's coming here. He could take his time and that's what you would sell it him on, right? You don't have to rush in. We don't have to qualify for the World Cup. Take your time. Look at the players. Stay at home and come here. And when you get them together, you uh, will see what you can do. Jurgen Klopp would be perfect because it's not going to be a... Look, you have, let's remind everyone here that national team coaches don't have the players at their beck and call all the time. So they can't be too sophisticated or nuanced with their tactics. It's got to be pretty standard and you got to have the players. The first and foremost thing is you've got to scout the players that are available to you and find the right combinations, which I don't think Greg Berhalter did a really good job at. I think he was pretty sweeping at that. And I said that in the last video, I think there were some more experienced players available uh, that could have made this a little different. Center back at the top of that list, maybe goalkeeper, 
uh, all these things that uh, just didn't just didn't hit right. But we'll, we won't talk about that now. So that would make sense for for Jurgen Klopp. Uh, other than that, the candidates that Doug McIntyre touched on were. Uh, the, the foreign ones, Patrick Vieira. He didn't say Yergi Love, but I've heard that name, and he's out of out of work right now, and he would make sense. I would like that move as well. Terry Henry, I just don't see that. That seems down the pecking order. Uh, he mentioned Jim Curtin of the American side. He mentioned uh, at the very top of the list uh, Steve Cherundolo and Wilfred Nancy. So uh, Wilfred Nancy would be great. Steve Cherundolo, there's a, already a smear campaign on Twitter why not to bring him in, which kind of floors me. And maybe I'm too close to the situation because I work at LAFC, but uh, if you've watched that club and what he does scouting and coaching up players and doing things in an incredible way with his tactics, I think you would sing, sing another song than what is being sang. But I'm sure it's not all out there. Uh, I think people, I can understand they want to get away from an American coach. They want a foreign coach. Great. Um, Another reminder that most of you are aware, most of these national team coaches don't hire high-profile people for that position. We, we Just look at what's going on right now in countries that we can relate with. Teams in the Americas, Copa America. Now, Marcelo Bielsa was a high-profile coach for Uruguay. It's paying off. Colombia has Nestor Lorenzo, who was coaching in Peru prior. That's not a big-name coach. No one knew who he was prior. Brazil's got Dorival Jr., who uh, is just a, he's a good coach in this giant community of coaches in Brazil. Nothing special. They're not going outwards. They haven't gone for years for Brazil. They keep it internal, but it is Brazil. And Venezuela that did so well have Fernando Batista, who was a youth coach for the Argentine system, which is a great place to get a coach, but again, kind of unknown. And we'll see what it goes. There's not these big high profile. That's why Jurgen Klopp would be a complete and utter outlier. Mexico, they hired a big name coach back in the day. You remember Sven Joran Eriksson? That didn't go well. That was the big hire who was in England. And um, everyone thought it just didn't click. And that's just one example. But again, I would like to see a big foreign coach come in here. But that's what people want to put them at ease. I don't know if they will get that. And I'm going to say is, I don't know. I'm not going to tell you who I think is going to take over. I have no idea. And I'm going to give U.S. soccer some credit here that they have kept that. We have no idea. The only name I can give you is Greg Berhalter, the incumbent. I don't know. Uh, Doug McIntyre gave Steve Cherundolo very high marks. I will say this about Steve. And I'll mention Wilfred Nancy. I don't think Wilfred Nancy takes this job because I don't think he would enjoy it. He enjoys being the coach at the club. Day in, day out, building, building, building. Steve Trundolo does that too. But he's American. He senses the opportunity. I think he would be a little more eager. And I don't know anything. I haven't talked to him. I talked to him all the week. I ain't bringing this up. That's a private affair. He's not going to tell me anything. So I don't think Wilfred Nazi will go for that. Steve, perhaps. And I want to tell you, it's what Steve has done. He has adjusted a team at LAFC from an attack-oriented to a deadly transition team. Pretty sweeping movements changing the the culture of that team he's also very good he's got german connections and i don't know if lafc used to bring in south american players they're bringing in european players this is the influence of steve chirunlo and his german contacts and he's making young european players in mls better timothy tillman became a national team player under the watch of steve chirunlo he's going to be on this national team he is exceptional he's one of the best midfielders in the league that happened in these two years he's been with the club. Mat Mat Matty Bogush, same thing. This is a guy who's getting attention from big Italian clubs. He was not, you know, he was nowhere to be found. And because of what he's done under Steve Cherundolo, they're watching. He's very good at scouting all of that. He has got a great eye. He's got all the chops as a player. I know he's a little inexperienced as a coach. That said, I'd still be surprised if he takes the job, unless there is some kind of thing where he can stay with LAFC and do both which is possible, but I don't think that's going to make ever anyone happy. And when push comes to shove, you have to focus on one or the other. So, I mean, the, the points there could be that. So, I think that people would be happier than Greg Berhalter because Greg Berhalter is just... And again, Greg, I think, has just run his course. You need something new. That's the, the nature of this beast on the national team stage. You move on and you... I. I can understand getting some sort of disciplinary, but I will, all the people I mentioned to you, Gerundolo, Nancy, Love, Klopp, T. 
Terry Henry, uh, Patrick Vieira, they all are, they're not pushovers at any means. And I'm not saying Greg is, but I think Greg, it got away from Greg because he knew he had the responsibility of bringing these young players. And we're seeing it now. It is ugly. These players don't know how to react to this situation. They are so green. And uh, they've been affected by this. Affected to the point that I don't think all of them come back. And if it is a coach that's going to be like, we got two years to do this. We better shape up. You're not. I don't trust you to do it. I don't trust you. Whoever that is. It's not going to be the same roster. Some guys are going to go, coach, I'm your guy. And he's going to go, I want you. It's simple. It's very subjective too. It's not just the best players, which I think is what Greg Berhalter, he said, let's get the best players. Didn't work. Didn't work. Because some of our best players at club did not play very well at country. You know who they are. Could rip off these names and none of their, none of their positions should be safe. I think we should look into naturalizing players, which is crazy for the U.S. But this is the World Cup. I will close with this. We're all hell-bent on 2026, like it's the end of the world. And we have to do well. And we should do well. But if we don't, the sun will come up tomorrow. Like little orphan Annie once sang. And we got to focus on 2030. So I think if you get a coach for 2426, that's one coach. If it goes great, you extend. But in 2026, you probably look at American coaches. Maybe that's the time for Steve Cherundolo. Jesse Marsh is out there. He's going to be a national team coach at some point. We want to develop players. We want to develop coaches. The importance of the World Cup is precedent. Then we move on. Let's get this straight. It's, it's a bad time now, but we keep our heads up. And there's enough good news there to say, and we hope that Copa America was rock bottom, which it did feel like that. If that's at rock bottom, then we will. Well, the 2017 was rock bottom. This was just a little rung above. Soccer OG, check out the Soccer OG podcast. Like and subscribe us here. We will be back when this announcement is made to give you all my thoughts. Be safe out there.